of yours. After James finished putting up the supports between the two parts of the house, he needed to start on the concrete footings for the porch posts. These footings and posts will support the trusses over the living quarters and porch. Eight, eight, 40 of them. Thirty-six. Yeah. These gotta go in dry with rods hanging up to, so I have to put those in. What kind of rods? Just rebar? Rebar. And I'll tie it in like this. The house needed five footings for the posts. So I still have a few things left that I need to plant, but I'm just not gonna get to it today. I'm still getting over having the flu, and I probably shouldn't even be out here today, but I have really bad cabin fever. And there are so many things I need to do for the garden for the fall that, you know, I just need to get out here. So um, I realized recently that the water wasn't getting to my tomato plants, which is really kind of frustrating. So I finally got water going to them again and they are just now all blooming and doing a lot better. They're still really small, but it's okay. Um, I have a couple of tomatoes growing and if I can keep these suckers growing through the winter, I'll be happy. Like that is one of my main purposes of being out here on the homestead is how to you know, do this for ourselves, how to make our own food 
whether it's growing it because we have animals or in the garden, you know, how to eat from the land. So that is like, that's my thing. So I'm gonna keep plugging away. There's still so much I have to do, but you know, 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, eventually, eventually I'll get there. So today is onion planting day for me. We have a freeze coming up and I really wanna get these in the ground before it gets too cold. They'll do a lot better in the ground than they will in these soil blocks, basically. Um, they've already had a really hard rain on them. They just need to get planted out. So. the onions today um, I just now realized that my bed is actually somewhat crooked it's wavy actually <laughs> so that's fun um, I don't know how many onions I have I hope that I have a lot <laughs> I don't I planted like at least six seeds per soil block and the way that I'm doing this is uh, a Charles Dowding method he does he calls it um, multi-sown onions. And so they grow in little clumps. Um, and throughout the season, the thicker clumps you can thin out. Then you end up with, with onions that grow in a clump of about four to five onions. And they're medium-sized onions, and so they're not terribly large. They're a lot easier to cook with, but they use a lot less space altogether than planting individual ones. Um, and you can plant, or you can sow like 10 seeds per soil block or, you know, little square, whatever. I also have a pill bug problem out here and I don't know how that's gonna do this year. We'll see, I uncovered all of the soil. Usually I would mulch this really heavily, but I'm not right now because I need these guys to grow and get bigger. Um, because last year when I did this, I did the same method and I planted about half of the uh, half of the amount um, in this bed that the garlics planted in, and the pill bugs ate almost all of uh, the onions. So uh, this time around, I'm uncovering it. I'm letting the sun hit it so that they don't like it as much. Oh so yeah, there's still a lot to do in the garden. I still have to fix. I don't know the spacing between these beds and fix the alignment of them and whatnot, but. You know, I, I have something going. You don't you don't have to start out perfect. It can be a mess. It can be crazy, and that's fine. That's what this is. Um, just get stuff in the ground, plant, and grow some food. <laughs> Do something. It feels really good. Uh, it's not perfect. It's not beautiful, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be picture perfect for it to work and for it to be worth it. The day finally came to load up our steer to take to the butcher. Our friend lent us their really cute goat trailer. Up to this point, we had only butchered small animals. This guy took us two years to raise, and the investment in both time and money was pretty substantial. After a couple long weeks of waiting, we brought the guy home, all packaged up and ready for dinner. Some of the best beef I've ever had.
Each form was about two square feet, so the holes needed to be pretty wide and three feet deep. We had some crazy rain, around eight inches, come through a few days after he dug the holes and filled them back in like halfway up. So we had to rent another excavator. We got a bigger one that time, which made the work a lot easier. To minimize the amount of dirt the excavator took up, James had to get in and dig out the bottom of each to be square enough for the form. 